grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Text for our meditation this morning. Today's Gospel from Luke chapter 6. In the name of Jesus, amen. This text contains one of the most often quoted passages in the entire Bible, and probably the one most quoted by those who, nothing, who know nothing else about the Bible, or of God for that matter. Verse 37 could be the poster child for misquotes and misinterpretations of Scripture. Every degenerate on the planet loves to spout, judge not, as though Christ meant to say that we're just supposed to accept whatever perversion people want to commit. But we have here also a classic passage usually attached to financial stewardship, but which, though not unrelated, certainly communicates more than the overflow of return you get from God for the exercise of generosity. Give, and it will be given to you, goes beyond monetary giving, as we will see. As we begin, we should recognize that this passage is grounded in something far more basic to the Christian life than judging, and more foundational even than stewardship. Indeed, everything in the life of a Christian flows from forgiveness, the forgiveness he receives, and the forgiveness he offers. Our giving grows out of our forgiving, and our judging is tempered by the judgment of God upon us. And that judgment is that we are counted as holy and righteous through faith in the holy and righteous Son of God. Jesus begins this part of his discourse by calling us to countercultural living. The old sinful nature in us agrees wholeheartedly with our culture when it insists if someone hates you, hate them back. If they curse you, curse them more. If someone sends you home with a bruised cheek, send him home in a body bag. Get your due. Take what's yours. Never let the other guy get over on you. But what does Jesus say? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And are you ready for the golden rule? Here it comes. As you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Wow, what a contrast. And before your rotten flesh can ask, what's in it for me? Jesus frames that question this way. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. Listen, it's easy to love those who love you. How does that make you any different from the people going to hell? You're supposed to be redeemed, justified and sanctified by God himself. You're on your way to heaven. If you behave just like the unredeemed, unregenerate, unsaved, uncircumcised Philistine in the house next door, what good is that? What have you contributed to the world? What good have you done? How have you positively influenced your culture? More is expected of you, Christian. You didn't get saved just to be a bump on a pew. Jesus says, love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, 
and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. See, it all begins with mercy, specifically the Father's mercy. You think you deserve to be saved? You think your heavenly home and everlasting life are given you because of something special about you? <laughs> Guess again. You and I had nothing, nothing to offer God except our rank poverty. Scripture says all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What was Cain's mistake? God accepted Abel's offering, but not Cain's. Why? Abel brought his offering in humility, resting on the grace and mercy of God. Cain brought his, expecting God to accept it based on his own merit. God's not looking for our merit. Our merit will never, ever be enough. Be perfect, Jesus says, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Can you be perfect? Neither can I. But God says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He told the Apostle Paul, when Paul was becoming conceited regarding his faith and God gave him a thorn in the flesh to make him humble, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God doesn't want our poor attempts to earn his favor. They'd never be good enough anyway. He wants our faith and trust in his mercy and grace toward us. And then he wants us to be merciful toward others. Blessed are the merciful, Jesus says, for they will be shown mercy. And in our text, be merciful even as your father is merciful. We have a great mercy deficiency in our, in our nation, folks. And it's spilling over into our church. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. Judge not doesn't mean to ignore sin and treat it lightly. It means not to judge others more heavily than we judge ourselves. We tend to be very judgmental when considering other people's sins, but then treat our own like they're not that big a deal. Tell you, a lot, tell you what, let's strike a bargain. You wanna hate sin, hate your own sin. Worry about your own sin. Judge your own sin. And you won't have time or energy left to worry about anybody else's. Leave the judging and condemning to God. He's in a much better position to do that anyway. He sees things you don't see, knows things you don't know, and he has perfection to base his judgment on. Your responsibility is to forgive Forgive, forgive, and keep on forgiving. That's what God does for you, isn't it? You have sins you can't stop committing. Keeps on forgiving you, doesn't he? Every time you ask, even before you ask, he forgives you on account of your faith in Jesus. How dare you refuse to forgive your brother or sister their sins against you. Forgiveness is the well from which the water of generosity flows. Your gratitude for the forgiveness you receive overflows into forgiving others and giving to others. 
The joy of generosity will never be active in your life until you know the joy of forgiveness. The forgiveness you receive freely from the gracious hand of God and the forgiveness you freely give to others based on the grace and mercy given to you. To be reconciled with a brother or sister, a neighbor, a co-worker, a fellow servant of Christ brings a joy that cannot be matched by any other experience in this world. There's simply nothing else like it, except possibly the joy that comes from being generous, generous to a brother or sister, a co-worker, a neighbor, or the work of Christ in his church. Giving and forgiving are intrinsically connected. They go hand in hand, and one cannot truly exist without the other. But who can live like that? Well, apparently, you can. Do you think God would tell you to do something you couldn't do? So apparently, you can love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and so on. You can be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Can you do these things on your own, under your own strength and power? Of course not. You and I need God's help to do these things. Thank God we can count on his help. Will we ever do these things perfectly in this life? Definitely not. We're still sinful human beings living in, living in a sinful world. We need forgiveness. Thank God we have that too. Oh, and by the way, we can also refrain from judging and condemning, for we have God's help with that as well. And not only do we have his help, we have his great example. Remember, the one commanding these things went so far as to put himself in a body bag rather than condemn us. And he had every right to condemn us. For he who made us also made the rules by which we are to live. So if anybody ever had a right to judge others, it's him. But he chose instead to suffer the consequence of our sin himself on our behalf. So when he says, judge not, condemn not, he does so as one who would rather die than condemn us. He would rather be crucified than to see us cut off from him forever. He would rather suffer the pangs of hell than to lose a single one of us. He who is the giver of all things and the forgiver of all sins calls us, inspires us, and empowers us to forgiveness and generosity. As his life is the pattern for ours, let us endeavor by the aid of his spirit to be both recipients and transmitters of his love, joy, peace, mercy, grace, generosity, and forgiveness. In his name and for his sake, amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.